All right, what's it mean for this team to at least have a share of the Big Ten? And where were you Sunday when it all kind of happened? Oh, I was at home. <laughs> um, but no, I didn't, I didn't watch the game, so um, I watched other games, but I didn't watch that game. Uh, you know, it's, it's obviously it's when you're a part of it, it's hard to reflect because like, you move to the next game. I think that's probably the you know, toughest piece you know, that you have there that you can't at the actual time like celebrate when it happens because you're, you know, you're not playing when it happens. It's a little bit different, especially after you lose a game. You, know, you have that feeling, and then the next day you find out you share at least uh, a piece of it. And, um, but no, our, we've, uh, we've had a good season to point. Like we're obviously in a, in a, in a tough stretch right here that almost everybody goes through. And now you got to be able to find your way out of it. And you know we're more focused on that than anything. Wisconsin fighting for its NCAA tournament. Yeah. Right. So I'm sure you know it's a tough game anyway. But now you know you're going to get a great shot from them. Um, they got a chance to, to get a big win on their schedule. Yeah. Very similar to the last year. You know our record was um, identical going into that game as it is right now. You know last year and obviously they were and we were you know trying to win a Big Ten championship. So everything was really close and. They bank in two shots in the last minute of the game, which was pretty unlucky for us and pretty lucky for them. But um, that's what happens when you get into close games. You know, things can go for you and things can go against you. Um, but you now they're um, the thing that happens is like you always say, you're gonna get everybody's best shot. Well, they should get our best shot too. And that's really been the kind of the focus of what we've talked to our guys about. Is like, you know, we gotta. It's not that we're not playing hard. You know, we just got to find it to play a little bit harder and really dive into that piece of it, dive into the defense, dive into the rebounding. Because what people want you to think is like, well, like, you know, you just didn't make shots, which is true, but no one's trying to miss a shot. Like, you know what I mean? Like, worry about the things that you can control. And those, things, those areas, you can control those areas. So just try to be as, you know, at that top level in terms of defending and rebounding and then taking care of the basketball, even though we didn't have a lot of turnovers the last game. You know, that's something that's going to be you know, so important for us. When you take shooting out of the equation, how do you feel how your team is playing when you talk about the rebounding yeah. into turnovers and stuff like that? Yeah, when well, you out-rebound somebody by 16 you know, in the game, you're going to take that. You get 21 more free throws and somebody, you're going to take that. The shots that we got, you know, I like the shots that we got. The shots that we gave up against Indiana, I like those too. And so, like, um, you know, analytically, it makes a lot of sense to get people into contested long twos outside the paint, and that's what we were able to do. You know, he just was really good in the game against Indiana and made a lot of tough shots, especially, you know, the way, um, you know, Trace Jackson Davis wasn't a big part of the game, you know. So there's a lot of positives to come from that, but um, you collectively have to win the game, and we didn't. So, like, I think that's the, the piece of it. Like the, our guys need to hear you know, the things that we did do well because you want to continue down that path. You can't be singular in thought going into a game. It's, oh, if we just make shots, we're going to be okay. That's not the way it works. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to, you know, still, you still got to get to the free throw line a lot because that's what you want to make more free throws. You know, you still have to generate good shots. But, you know, defense travels and rebounds, you know, rebounding travels. And that's, you know, you want those things to be, you know, you know, right there for you. But during the stretch, you feel like you've, those are areas that you've um, done well for the most part. Well, those three games in a row, we turned it over a lot. Like yeah. That was our Achilles in that stretch there. So if I kind of looking at, we've lost four out of six, is that correct? Like if you just go to that six game stretch, like those three games jump out to me in terms of our volume of turnovers. So that's, it's better in the next game and it's better versus a team that pressures too, Indiana pressures. So I thought that was something that was a positive also. Taking on uh, Wisconsin and Illinois this late mm -hmm. into the season, haven't played them before. Right. Does anything different about scouting when they have that much tape on them? Not really, just because you know we're all just kind of coming off. Um, you know, both teams right here are coming off a tough loss. You know, Wisconsin. You know, you know thought they had that game in Michigan, and obviously Hunter makes a tough three at the buzzer, and that game goes into overtime, and they lose. So you're both coming off a loss. Um, you're, you're both for different reasons. You know, we're trying to win an outright Big Ten championship. They're trying to get in the NCAA championship, NCAA tournament. Um, we're trying to secure a number one seed in the NCAA tournament. Also, I think that's a um, a big thing for us. If we can be able to pull that off, that would be great because you you know you want to put yourself in the best possible position. It doesn't guarantee anything, but you just want to keep improving as a program. And
keep getting yourself in those spots to try to give your, your, yourself the best chance to keep in veins. So, but no, I, it's, there's a lot at stake here. You know, like, you know, outright Big Ten championship, NCAA tournament, um, seeding, you know, for the Big Ten tournament, seeding for the NCAA tournament. So, I, yeah, you would think that both teams will, you know, be ready to roll. I know you're planning on Hepburn playing. Yes. But when he's not on the floor, how different of a team is Wisconsin? Yeah, I would think they're a lot different, but then after watching the Michigan game, like they played really well without him, and we know how good um, they are across the board. They have a good team. They've lost a lot of close games. They've been in a lot of overtime games, and so like it's one of those things where we've had some closer games early in the season. We were fortunate to win it. You know, It's just that fine line, whether you win or you lose. Um, but we'll prepare for him to be out there. We know how good of a player he is. We know how tough he is. Um, he's a clutch player. He gets big time steals late in games. He makes big time shots. Um, he's a he's a big piece to them. But they showed other night, Klesman and Asijan, both of those guys, you know, really got cooking. And you know, Wall and uh, Crow are, are good players. But I thought McGee came in and did a really good job for him. You know, he got in the paint. He got a lot of offensive rebounds. Um, you know, just kind of played his role. You know, was, was aggressive when he had to be. And I, I thought he did a really good job. He averaged 12. Um, you know, last year at Green Bay. So he, he's been in college, he's played a lot, even though he hasn't played a lot this year. Ethan said every good team has a, a David Jenkins type player, a, a guy that can do a lot of different things, mm -hmm. can score, can facilitate. Um, what has he meant as a transfer yeah. coming in here with one year and, and mostly from a leadership perspective? Yeah, well, he's had a great attitude more than anything. You know, he didn't come here to play 10 to 15 minutes, and that's what he's doing. And a lot of guys, you know, they kind of go south on you, and he hasn't. You know, he's stayed positive. He's been great for Braden, um, he's been great for everybody. He's got a very energetic personality, and he brings it every single day. And uh, he's, he's done a lot of little things to help us win. He said he's, he's made some buzzer beaters throughout his career, but this year is unlike anything, you know, with the shot clock winding right. down or the half winding down. Is he just better in those clutch situations, do you think? Yeah, he's good off the dribble in terms of getting his rhythm, shooting threes. And so that really gives him a rhythm when he, you know, he shoots those. And then obviously, when you're in those situations a lot, that's what it is. It's kind of dribbling to find your space. You know, so you can get it off um, before the shot clock goes off. Probably a question you didn't think you'd get today, but just what Matt Frost has added mm -hmm. to your program, and yeah. I, you know, everybody knows how much right. you value the walk-ons right, right. that you have here, and just just how devastated yeah. was it that he got hurt before yeah, it, the year, and how he's kind yeah. of bounced back from that. It, it's tough, you know. You you you, you work, and um, you know you do a lot of things and, and practices to walk on that it helps the program and it helps the team but it's, it's not a lot of fun to be frank with you, you know, they're, they're, they're guarding a lot they're doing a lot of different things and drills to make the drill work things of that nature and when you sacrifice and you do all that you know you want to have your senior season especially the you know the year that we've had and all the positives that we had throughout the year and the success and then when he you know he tears his ACL you know he's not be able to be a part of it in terms of playing, but he has stayed connected with us, and um, you know he's there at every single practice, and he's at every single film session, and um, you know he's just done a lot of little things for us, and obviously we rewarded him with the scholarship, which was great. You know, we're not always in that position to do that if we use all 13. So um, anytime that we don't, we try to make sure that those guys get a scholarship. You talked a lot about environments this year. How is uh, Wisconsin? Yeah. Oh, it's one of the best in the country. You know, they, they have. Um, a very good environment or into it. Um, knowledgeable basketball fans. When I say that, I don't always speak for student sections, <laughs> <laughs> including ours. <laughs> so because of, well, normally the crazy stuff that happens happens from student sections. You know, whether that's ours or theirs or anybody else's. You know, but their fans that aren't in the student section are, are very knowledgeable fans. Uh, Wisconsin is just a cool place, man. It, it just is. You know, it's, it's a great sports town in Madison. Um, it's, a, it's an unbelievable campus, and um, but no, they they have something special there at the Cole Center and all the sellouts that they have, and obviously we have a lot of that in our league, but uh, I think 17,000 people fit in there, and they, they sell it out every single time. So it's uh, it's pretty cool to go up there, even though it's it's pretty tough to win. Uh, speaking with Braden, um, he was harping on himself, just getting better on the defensive side of the ball. Mm -hmm. Um, just what have you seen from him, I guess, maybe in this rough stretch that maybe he needs to get a little bit better at right. uh, in, in these last couple weeks? And uh, yeah. how can maybe some of the plays that he made, you know, earlier in the season, the types of plays, you know, steals, uh, right. effort plays, kind of yeah. 
bring energy to the team on that side of the ball. More than anything, as a defender, you you, know, you have to be in the right position. I think that's more important than anything, like knowing what's going on, you know, being disciplined. Um, for him, not letting one end affect the other end. You know, if you're missing shots at one end or you turn the basketball over, you know, nobody feels good about that, but you got to move on and move to the next play. I think the concentration is, is probably the next step for him. He'll he'll have a lack of concentration and have breakdowns to things that he just had success with, which makes no sense, right? But you were just successful doing the right thing two or three times in a row, and then all of a sudden a couple times back to back, you don't do it. You know, you have to be locked in. You just can't do whatever you want offensively or defensively, especially if the ball goes into Zach, you got to get to your right spot because the way they're doubling and the way we know they're coming, now we attack it. Like almost every one of Zach's turnovers, not everyone, but almost everyone, is the foreman not doing what he's supposed to, one of the guards not getting to where they're supposed to, and so now it creates kind of a little bit of an overload and he expects people to be at certain spots. It doesn't mean you throw the ball to Ghost. You know, you still got to throw the ball to players. Right. Um, but those types of things, um, when the ball goes inside, getting to where you're supposed to on the offensive end, that's different for him, you know, because he's always had the ball in his hands. And, and so, like, little things like that. Well, defensively, there's a lot of those scenarios, so you really got to concentrate defensively. You go play Trace Jackson Davis, we're going to handle that double and that scrape ball side differently than we're going to handle with Stephen Crow and Tyler Wall. It doesn't mean there's not some similarities, but we just handle it a little bit differently. So you got to know what you're doing there. So for him, like he'll he'll just knock things out and get steals and know where it's going on, and then he'll have that lack of concentration and that just that's just basketball maturity. Like he's growing in those areas. Like you can't just be good at the things you like. You know, you got to be good at you know everything, and that's what a two-way player is. That's what an all-around player is. And he's growing in those areas, but he's just got to keep coming. You're kind of just talking about defensively. Every team preps for Zach differently. Yes. Um, in what ways, especially for a team like Wisconsin, where you don't know, know exactly how they're going to double? How, right. How much do you? I mean, how much coaching-wise? Mm -hmm. um, do you strategize with Edie, or then how much do you just rely on his basketball IQ in game right. situations? Yeah, they'll, they'll come a couple different ways, and, and so we'll just work both those ways. Uh, that's what they've done in the past. Uh, that's what they did. What's good about our league is that we've had Trace Jackson Davis, we've had Kofi Coburn, we got Hunter Dickinson, so they got a game plan for those guys too. So even though we haven't played them, like we can go watch those tapes and say, Trace is a little bit different because he does a lot off the bounce where he uses his quickness and his athleticism, where Hunter will dribble down for a post up, and he's such a good passer, but he post up, Zach's the one that gets the deepest position in our league. He probably gets the deepest position in the country. And, and so like now they come on traditional doubles, big to big, or they'll hold a guy. They've held a guy before. And then sometimes they've kitchen synced it. So when you kitchen sink it, they just mean everybody comes. And, and so we'll mix different things up in practice, even things that we don't think they're gonna do. Um, not a heavy dose of it, but just enough to say like, hey, read the situation. Like, you know, a guy, everybody can come and double you. They can leave you one-on-one. -on -one. The big can come and double you. They can come ball side. They can come high opposite. They can come baseline side like Nebraska. So like there's a handful of different things that you can do. The one thing that's cool about it is if we do our job, we've seen it all. There's nothing that they can really do. Like it's like when we go against a two-two-one press and people lose their mind, like whatever. There's only a couple ways to, you know, to cut that apple, brother. Like there's not 17 things how to go against a two-two-one press. Like there just isn't. So, you know, you got to be able to get the basketball, and move it towards your goal, and roll with it, and go at times. But then there's other times when they come and get aggressive. You got to pass and flash, and you got to read situations. Well, that's no different with that. Like you got to read a situation sometimes, and and when those guys might not get to their spots. You know, don't throw it to Wisconsin. You know, hold that thing and be secure with it and then, you know, try to get a better pass out of it.